gents, we're going to be talking about cannabis and gut health and what we can do to improve our gut health with cannabis. The fascinating thing about cannabis is that our body already runs on cannabinoids or endocannabinoids. We actually have an entire network, an entire system that runs through our body which communicates with your immune system, with your nervous system, with your digestive system, with your musculature, with the neurons in your brain, you name it, it probably interacts with the cannabinoid system. So you can actually use cannabis itself to top up or um, modulate this system. Um, and in terms of digestive health, there is something called a endocannabinoid deficiency. This has been looked at with IBS and scientific studies have found, I'll put it in the link description, that people with IBS and other conditions like fibromyalgia and migraine actually suffer an endocannabinoid deficiency. So when you actually use cannabis, you might, you might be uh, topping up on the endocannabinoids in this system. So when cannabis is smoked or ingested or used as an oil, you are actually using cannabinoids analogously. You're using them uh, to mimic endocannabinoids. They actually bind to the same receptors and cause uh, the endocannabinoid system to uh, change its, its state of affairs or the way it operates. And throughout the gut you actually have so many loads of CB receptors, cannabinoid receptors, and they can modulate things from smooth muscle contraction to inflammation um, and immune function and intestinal permeability, which is the opening and closing of the tight junctures in the intestinal tract, which underpins a leaky gut, which is a factor in IBS. So, using cannabis, what does it actually do? So, you can actually use cannabis in the form of an oil. Uh, for a long-term strategy in order to slowly help modulate the level of inflammation to keep it down, which we know damages the gut wall, uh, causing some of the long-term symptoms of IBS. We can, also use, um, uh, we can also use it as an antimicrobial. Uh, CBD especially and other terpenes and phytocannabinoids have shown antimicrobial properties. Why this is important is because with IBS there is a state of dysbiosis or imbalance in the gut, in the microbial community. So other herbs do this as well, but cannabis has shown some great uh, potential in reversing this. But it actually stamps out some of the pathogenic bacteria in, um, in dysbiosis. You know, but the, these results are still pre preliminary. They've been shown in vitro, which is in a petri dish. They're still yet to be shown in vivo, but the anecdotal evidence is pretty strong within the cannabis community. Um, so that's the second aspect of cannabis. Uh, it's also a antioxidant, which means it's going to help protect the cells of the body and the digestive tract against oxidative stress, which eventually damages the cells. It damages their ability to uptake nutrients. It damages their ability to protect you from pathogens and viruses, which are going to lead to autoimmune conditions and um, a whole bunch of other things we don't want happening in the body. So. Um, aside from being an anti-inflammatory, an antioxidant, and an antimicrobial, it also helps with um, tight junction reg regulation, which is the uh, opening and closing of the junctions or the gaps in your intestinal cells or your enterocytes. Um, this is what can allow the passage of undigested food particles like gluten and dairy through the lumen which is where the immune system lies and it can actually cause the immune system to become active and uh, um, launch an immune response causing you know, uh, irritation and aggravation and some of the nasty digestive uh, symptoms of IBS. So what we really want to do is to close the gaps in these junctions which THC and CBD do. Uh, they are the two principal cannabinoids in cannabis um, and which you will find in cannabis oil. So, um, by closing these gaps, you're going to stop uh, particles getting through um, and provide a layer of defense uh, against them. And you're also going to help your absorption of other nutrients, which can you can become deficient on for lack of absorption when you have IBS or a leaky gut. Probably one of the best ways to use cannabis for this is in an oil. 
Um, it contain a full um, spectrum extract will probably be best because it contains all of the, the lipids, um, the cannabinoids, the terpenes, um, and other phytocannabinoids, which are going to help um, perform all these roles we've just discussed. And also, you'll be ingesting it, so it'll actually be passing through the intestinal tract. Um, smoking cannabis can be pretty good for alleviating symptoms of IBS, so the discomfort associated with bloating and the gas, and uh, maybe some of the passage of food through the digestive tract. You know, it can be tough to get your hands on cannabis because it sadly is illegal in quite a few countries still to this day, which is an absolute mystery to me, and uh, I think the reason it's still illegal is more ideological than pharmacological. But nonetheless, I digress. Um, you can actually get CBD oil in uh, the UK and other countries where cannabis itself is still illegal. Um, this is just one of the parts of the cannabis plant which doesn't get you high but still has quite a few uh, beneficial properties like regulating intestinal permeability, acting as an antioxidant, acting as an anti-inflammatory and as an antimicrobial as well. I will put all of this information in the video description including links to the studies showing um, this promise from cannabis. So please let me know your, know your thoughts about cannabis if you currently use it for IBS, if it's helped you, um, and any other information um, about this wonderful plant. So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope it was informative. Please subscribe for more um, tips on gut health and mental health. Thank you for tuning in, folks.